Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul Lutheran on this third Sunday of Advent. A voice calls out in the wilderness. We could choose to ignore it. A voice calls out in the wilderness. Do you hear it? Let us draw near to God. For the candle lighting liturgy, um, I will be on the right side, and those on the in the sanctuary on my side will be A's, and those who are on Ander, Pastor Ander's side will be the B's, okay? Joy is seeing people you love after months apart. Joy is hearing, come on over. It has been too long. Joy is the stretches and giggles of a newborn child. Joy is making it home when the journey is long. Joy is your dog sliding to meet you at the door. 
Joy is the energy of a new season. Joy is feeling found when you thought you were lost. So today, we light the candle of joy because the welcome God has for us is nothing short of joyful. Rest in that good news. Let it wash over you. Family of faith, we are close to home. Amen. It takes courage to tell the truth. John the Baptist knew it. His job as a prophet certainly could not have been easy. And you and I know it. Our job as people of faith to create a home for all has never been easy. In our prayer of confession, may we channel some of John the Baptist's courage to tell the truth about ourselves and our world. We do not do this to shame ourselves or guilt ourselves for being imperfect. We speak the truth out loud because we know that we cannot grow and change without first being honest. So let us be brave. Let us be bold. Let us be truth-tellers as we confess together now to a God who couldn't love us any more than God already does. Let us pray. Expansive God, we know that the church is your house, and your house has room for everyone. Yet too often, instead of setting the table for our neighbors, we block the door. Instead of welcoming all, we judge others by our own standards. Instead of sharing our second vote, we hide it in the attic, holding on to fear. Instead of letting go with love, remind us that your home is a home for all, that truth requires hard work, that truth requires uncomfortable justice. Help us to be bold enough to see it and brave enough to live it. With hope we pray. Amen. Family of faith, God sent prophets like John the Baptist to us because this work is not easy. Helping create a world where all might have a home and all might be loved and all might know peace is an audacious goal. Fortunately for us, when we mess up, when we lose our way or forget our call, we are met with grace. God could not love us any more or any less than God already does. So rest in this good news. We are at home with God, forgiven, claimed, and loved. The door is always open for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. God, whose love is like the sun warming me from the inside, if you are my home, then your word is the street light guiding me there. So I want you to know I am walking your way. We are walking your way. And we are looking for a light. And our feet are dirty. We've lost our way a time or two. And our bags are heavy. We're carrying an array of grief and fear on our backs. But we are on our way. We're looking for your light. We're listening for your word. When you see us coming, when you feel our hearts move, we hope you'll run down the driveway and catch us. Leave the light on. We are on our way home. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite the assembly to be seated as we gather around us. The lesson is a reading from Zephaniah. Sing loud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Galilee, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh 
shall see the salvation of God. John said that to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we? What should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the throngs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm not sure if Brian knew he drew the short straw on all the names that he had to pronounce yesterday, but I'm glad Brian was here. And also the challenge of saying the paths will be made straight as a queer pastor is getting into the pulpit. That's, that's a whole choice, but still, there is good news for us today. Beloved, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. O God, who makes space for us in the divine dance, you draw us to you, not only that we might sing your praises or tend to our neighbor, you gather us in that we might find space simply to be, to exist alongside our community of faith and find joy all the while. May we take that invitation to heart this day, knowing that we not only find that joy in our own sense of belonging, but in ways we curate that space of belonging for others. May the meditations of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A movie buff, I am not. In fact, I'm sure uh, there are a few movies I can name right now you'd be surprised that a nerd like me hasn't seen, like The Princess Bride or any of the Lord of the Rings movies. But <laughs> this last week, I was able to revisit one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. It comes out of Studio Ghibli, a Japanese animation studio that has a reasonably sized but exceedingly devoted following, who are famous for creating stunningly beautiful movies that carry with them stirring messages. They're famous for movies like Spirited Away, or My Neighbor Totoro, or even Kiki's Delivery Service, but the film in question this morning is called Howl's Moving Castle. Just by show of hands, is anyone familiar with Howl's Moving Castle? A few, great, cool. But I will give a frame for everyone else as well. The story of Howl's takes place in the midst of chaos and war, but not in the thick of chaos and war. The characters bounce between places as we, the viewer, catch glimpses of the pain being brought by powerful countries in this struggle. There are themes of wrestling with power, tangling with grief, and plenty of anti-war themes throughout the whole story. However, 
That's not what struck me in this most recent viewing. No, what stuck with me as I watched was the resolution of the story, in which a sense of belonging and peace settled on the whole narrative as we watched so many characters that had been in conflict with each other and with the wider world throughout the movie proverbially ride off into the sunset as a small community, an intentional community, who have known the ravages of war but are now content to be together as they share in peace. This movie in all its goodness stuck with me because I heard a lot of similar themes as I was reading what John the Baptist was saying in the wilderness in his, his specific historical time that he was preaching out of. JTD wasn't speaking these words out of a vacuum by any means. The people of that region and at that time would have been experiencing the ravages of imperial power as Rome continued to exact that power over these people who were simply looking to survive. In response to that power being used for harm, we have these words of John calling for repentance and change. A passage that might seem strange for us to be dwelling with on a Sunday where we are intentionally dwelling with joy. Don't worry, we'll get there. First, I want to name that we might find ourselves in a similar space as the characters of Powell's Moving Castle, or even as John the Baptist and the people who were with him. Well, we might not be in the midst of a war burning the countryside or under imperial occupation, we find ourselves in the midst of a time of tremendous conflict and division on a multitude of scales. The peace we might have known from some period in our lives might feel like it's dissipated completely, that there's no hope to return to that sense of calm we might have once known. In carrying that realization, we might find ourselves holding on to more grief than we care to carry, holding fear over what might yet arrive in our midst for us to deal with, or holding exhaustion simply by thinking about what might be asked of us next. Additionally, from where we dwelled last week, in the words of John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, we know that the foundation has been laid for something new, something incredible, something grand. We know that the foundation was laid for John the Baptist to speak these words that we heard today as he was standing out in the wilderness. But a foundation has been laid for us as well to prepare for something new, to prepare the way for something new. All of this foundation is laid for the sake of change. <gasps> Pastor Andrew said the C word, change. And as we hear in John's words this morning, this foundation is laid for the sake of belonging, for the sake of intentional care, for the sake of curating space so that all might find a home. John knows that the people to whom he is speaking are carrying a similar grief fear, and exhaustion that we might be holding today, and points to ways in which God calls us, calls this community, both the community of John the Baptist time and our community here at St. Paul, to reckon with these feelings, but also the ways in which God is bringing about change for their sake, for your sake. Take John's words about the one for whom he is preparing the way. Yes, the baptism through water that John is providing is nice and good, while also providing a sense of community to those gathered through those waters. But the one that is yet to arrive will baptize not with cool waters, but with fire and the Holy Spirit. Now, two things that I know about the Holy Spirit and fire, what they have in common. One, they don't leave things that they encounter the same. And two, through an encounter with them, renewal might happen. But not without what was once there being burned away. Such truth shouldn't stand as something we should be afraid of 
either. Even if we might have grown comfortable with the way things are now. But pointing to the arrival of what is yet to come is the, is the last thing that John does in this passage. Before that, he explicitly equips those who are listening to him with what they can be doing to prepare the way. Those who are with them, they ask specifically, well, what can we do about all of this? And John tells them, and we can hear these words and do something with them too. His task is simple. Care for those who cannot care for themselves. Do not employ shady business practices. Do not use power for the sake of your own gain. All told, it's a helpful, for, helpful reminder for us that creating a spirit of care, as we see in the Bible, is in our hands to curate. Not in the hands of the outcast or the needy to bring up or to bring about. In other words, this passage stands in stark contrast to the pick yourself up by your bootstraps idea of those in need finding solid ground for themselves to sing on. Last and most importantly, and probably most famously, John reminds those to whom he's speaking that in doing something new, as he is doing, God's promises aren't exclusive to a particular group of people. The Abrahamic connection of the Jewish people was an important way in which these promises were drawn from generation to generation, but to that, John says, no, you brood of vipers. Being an insider in that way is no longer meant as a means of protection for yourself and yours, but instead an invitation to expand what it means to be an insider, to create space for someone new to join in, to make space in this home for others, to make space for others to care for others, to provide home for others. We're gifted with the unique opportunity to provide that space, that care, and that sense of belonging for people who are looking for a place to simply be. For so long, churches have been places where that belonging wasn't able to be found for fear of being ostracized, hurt, or far worse for many people. But we already know that such a narrative is beginning to change. St. Paul has been part of that narrative changing in our world and continues to do so. For people like me, for whom belonging has always felt like something that needed to be earned in so many ways. For people who think that people like them don't belong in a place like this. We are invited, church, to extend grace, love, and joy, the joy of belonging, in abundant ways, without the strings of fear and shame attached to that belonging. This invitation does not come only with bright eyes and kind words, though, dear ones. It requires us to hold that hope-infused joy alongside the intentional work of learning who our neighbor is, to be prepared for how we might better care for them, to know what their needs are. Providing a place to be is very different from providing a place belong. There is an intentionality to it. A recognition that the needs of others change as time carries on and as God calls us to this work in ever new ways. All of this means that this church, this community, this place does not become a bastion for us to replicate ways of old but is instead a place to be seen as our whole selves. To be present in that fullness without fear, and to share in the joy 
that comes with the sense of belonging we might only know because of communities just like this one. There is deep joy in this invitation, dear church. And may we be intentional in how we grasp onto it. Within the wake of war and Howl's Moving Castle, home is found in redemption, in resolution, and in the joy of companionship. In the communities John is preparing for the arrival of the Messiah, home can be found in renewal, in care of one's neighbor, and in joyful hospitality. Even in our community here at St. Paul, we find home in the many and varied ways we are invited to ponder how we might create space for others to experience those same feelings of home, belonging, and joy. May we be awake to just such newness. May we be awake to welcome those seeking belonging. May we be awake to all that God is doing in us, doing with us, and doing for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. God of open doors and porch lights, of welcome mats and candles in the window, we cannot thank you enough for your open door policy. You are forever welcoming us home. In a world that puts handrails on park benches so that those without a roof over their heads cannot lie down, you offer something radically different. You welcome all of us, just as we are. You remind us that there is enough love to go around and that neighbor helping neighbor is who we are called to be. Thank you for the voice in the wilderness that calls to us. Thank you for the radical welcome and unchanging love. Today, God, we give extra gratitude for the people and places that are home to us. We, but we also pray for all those without a home. We pray for immigrants and refugees navigating the waters of trauma, change, and loss. We pray for those who experience homelessness and for those scraping together every coin to pay last month's rent. We pray for those who do not feel at home in their body, assigned a gender or an identity that does not fit their spirit. We pray for those who do not feel at home in your church, wounded by strict rules or judgmental accusations. We pray for those who, build, who long to build a home with another, but instead find themselves eating another meal alone. God, there are so many who need a home. So help us be builders of that new day. Give us the courage of John, who saw a way forward so clearly. Turn our words into action and our conviction into change. Gracious God, you are a God of open doors and welcome home celebrations. Teach us to be the same. And as we learn and as we grow. Amen. Be with the family and friends of Janet Stewart, O oh God, mourning her death and celebrating her place in heaven with you, and also with those who have lost loved ones, including those killed by recent storms. Remind us all, dear God, as we prepare for the festivities of Christmas to remember the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. We continue on here this morning with our call to offering, prepared to offer our gifts and tithes to God. The people asked John, what should we do? I've asked myself that a million times in my life. How do I make a difference? Can I really do anything that can help this hurting world? Is it already too late? Is it already too big? It can feel overwhelming at times, but John says, if you have two coats, give one away. It's all that easy. And it's all that hard. So friends, let us give our tithes and our offerings now, knowing that these gifts help build a world where all have a home, where all are welcomed, fed, loved, and known. What should we do? We should give what we have. It's all that easy and all that hard.
God who welcomes us home, who creates space, who leaves a chair with our name on it. We have two coats and we are giving one away. That's what this offering is. It's our second coat. It's our hearts on our sleeves. It's our audacious hope that there can indeed be a better world than this one. So take these gifts and use them to move us closer to that promised day. Gratefully we pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the right beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise of your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Thank you. This is my body, which is given to me. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and this cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, God, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your life. Bring the gift of peace on them. All praise and glory are yours, Holy Lord of Israel. Word of God incarnate. Power of the Most High. One God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. Now. Please come, um, the table is now set.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ drink in you and keep you without grace. Most high God, you have come among us at this table by your Spirit's power. Form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. <laughs> service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcome. So come back soon. In the name of the foundation, God, Spirit, and Son. Amen. Connected to community, neighbor, and faith. Go in peace. God will bring us home. Thanks to God.